Yields up is comic 95 best savior. And uh, y'all, there's just so much that I want to talk about. And I've already done this a million times, but just as the title says, y'all probably already suspect it. I'm about to reply to a comment that I got on YouTube. So it's a long comment and I'm going to break it down. And it's on the exact same video. I literally, every time it's, you know, white people, it's always them trying to correct me and tell me something that they think they know better and more of than me. So first, let me explain. I made a video talking about my experience working at Kids Stool. And since I made that video, I actually had someone that I worked with and kind of talked about briefly in that video, reached out to me and basically, you know, apologized if they came off the wrong way or whatever, which was totally cool. And of course the person that did that was black because it wasn't gonna be a white person, but yeah. So, and you know, no shade to that person, thing like that, like I really appreciate that. And I also admit it, like, you know, that's something that I personally probably just took the wrong way, but I was explaining what was going through my mind, my head. I had no problem with that girl. But um, back on subject, yeah, since I made that video, I triggered white people and two people in particular. So we had a, what did I say? We have a colonizer, Chris, and we have a colonial Karen that lost their crap over my video and I talked about Karen and the reason why she was wrong. Her, her argument, which I won't bother to go into the extreme detail on that because I can make this video three hours again if I do that. Her argument, which seems to make sense if you just read the comment and don't watch the video, was, well, how can you talk about this company? You only worked there for a day. And I compared that to saying, how can you say that this is a bad man when you only dated him for a day or you only you know, stayed with him for a week, a month, whatever? So because someone's beating on you, you stay with them for a year, somebody's treating you bad, they're abusing you, they're emotionally abusive, whatever the case is, I stay with them and see if things change. Do you say to a girl, oh, well, you only stay with them for a week or it was just your first year of marriage, things will get better. If you have a bad gut feeling about your job and you know you can get a better job, why would she stay? Okay, <laughs> like what? And so the other thing too was like, I really hate that, especially when talking to white people, you always have to leave out anything that makes you look bad. Because if you say anything, like if you try to tell the whole story to a white person, instead of them being like, oh wow, okay, I see how this person is feeling. Thank you for the details. I get what's going on in your mind. I'm getting your side and theirs. Nope, instead, instead of focusing on what went wrong, what was done wrong to you, they become the armchair experts. I want to tell you how you did X, Y, and Z wrong. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah, you're bad for this, whatever. Sorry, but I don't care if I came to work smoking weed. If I work for you, you pay me. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's a scapegoat. It's not even a scapegoat. It's a fallacious argument. You're ignoring what happened to me and trying to find fault in what I did. And you're also not praising me for the fact that I was honest with you about my side of things and my shortcomings and what I did not do right that put me in that situation to begin with. But that's also besides the point. It's not both of us were wrong. This is an employer. I am the employee. There are things that I can do as a human being to stop things from happening. And by stop things from happening, like I said, that means stopping me from being at the mercy of needing the help of someone else. But someone screwing me and fucking me over as an employer, that does not get a pass because you felt like I should have done this differently or I should have had more money when getting started or whatever. I didn't ask, bitch, have you seen my YouTube? Do you know where I live? I am living in Shibuya. I don't need no advice from no broke ass colonizer, but back on subject. So yeah, I basically made a whole video explaining why Karen was wrong. I'm not going to get into all of that crap. We talking about colonizer Chris for this video. Colo uh, was it? Yeah. Colonial Karen has her own video. If I can remember, I'll link it in the description and put a comment for it. I'll pin it. But yeah, we're going to talk about Chris right now because Chris made a much better point. And I believe Chris is actually living in Japan based off of what he had to say. But Chris is also wrong because just like Colonial Karen, Chris did not read what I actually had to say. Chris did not actually listen to what I had to say. Instead, Chris watched my video like most colonizers with the you know mindset of, let me tell this bitch why she's wrong. I'm white. I know everything about Japan. And there, I, I'm literally going to like just dissect the entire comment. So let me read his whole comment to you to start with, because I don't normally do this. Normally I break it down and, you know, go line by line. But let me read the whole comment. I have my other computer right here. It says, you seem quite focused on race, which seems irrelevant for most of this story. Also, I doubt a monthly pass from Umeda to Toyonaka 
it is six hundred dollars. What is it? Sixty thousand yen or six hundred dollars, as you said. The company isn't going to pay for a monthly pass for a new employee if they have a high turnover rate. They would lose a lot more money than save. Asking for a pay advance on your first day when you've had a month to prepare, not bring the correct documents or the uniform is ridiculously unprofessional. You seem quite entitled thinking you should have been given a pay advance. You repeat it often that it's not what happened, but the way it was handled. They continue to get mad about it. Why could you not get a part-time job for a month? You weren't working. For the month you weren't working. Osaka is a big city. And during the pandemic, especially, it's very simple for a native English speaker, such as yourself, to find some work. I posted once in a group on Facebook and got 15 offers in the space of two hours. Some of the things that the company did was quite terrible, to be honest. But welcome to Japan, land of zero employee rights, even more so if you're foreign. So, reading the comment as it is, yeah, it sounds like he's making a lot of great points from the start. But then it's like, okay, let's keep a few things in mind. You're completely ignoring both the title of the video what was the result of me quitting the job and choosing to leave? <laughs> you're, you're like completely ignoring the whole problem of that. That's why I said, like when you're talking to white people, don't give any backstory. Don't explain anything else that led up in your mind why I want to leave this place. Only talk about the highlight because otherwise their brain goes directly into you're a bad person. You shouldn't have done this instead of being like, wow, your employer wasn't shit. That's how their brain works. So sounds like he's right. Let me break it down for Chris. All right. It says, you seem quite focused on race. That seems irrelevant for most of the story. I'm quite focused on race and it's irrelevant. Of course, since when do colonizers think race is relevant? It never is until they want slaves, right? Okay. Let's get back on subject with that. Race isn't relevant. First of all, dumbass, I didn't say that race was the basis of my story. I said the environment of the school came off as being racist. I didn't feel welcome. It was almost all blonde hair, blue eyes, white staff. And conveniently, nearly all of the white staff, with the exception of the one guy that was gay, which I don't know what his stance was on me or not, they did not speak to me. I got one other guy that offered to help me. So there was literally maybe two or three people out of like 20 plus teachers that were working there that actually spoke to me and made me feel welcome. Everyone else, not, it wasn't a matter of them not being my best friends, but I'm telling you my environment that I was in what it was like working there, what I felt like when I walked into the school. I had been up to the school about three or four different times, not just the one day that I worked there. That's what I was talking about. But of course, colonizer Chris, he wants to make a narrative. So instead of talking about what I was actually saying, he changes the conversation and says, oh, let's dismiss race altogether. That has nothing to do with the story. It does, you dumbass. I'm explaining why I quit my job. I'm telling you what was going through my mind, red flags that I had things that made me uncomfortable. This is what I was saying in my video, because see what white people got out of that was, oh, you didn't get a pay advance, so you quit your job. Well, that's really dumb. I explained that it wasn't just not getting a pay advance. It was everything else that led up to it. And that was the icing on the cake. That is what I said. But of course, white people can't hear that. Your goal is to correct me because you want to believe that you know everything about Japan and racism isn't an issue. Whatever. Anyway, like I said, I literally told the story, they have a long ass video to explain what my mindset was. And I also told you about the times I went up there to do paperwork before, prior to when I got started working. Of course, you didn't get that part though. But I'll give you props. You appear to have watched more of the video than I expected you to. Okay. Also, Dada Monthly Pass from Umeda Toyanaka is $600, as you said. This is why it's very important to listen colonizer Chris. If you actually watched my video, read what I said, nowhere in my video did I just say that it was a monthly pass. And nowhere in my video did I say that I was going just from Umeda to Toyonaka. That was my transfer. You don't know where exactly do I live. I did not live. I was not rich at that time, and I'm still not right now. I did not live next to Umeda Station. That was my transfer station. Smart ass. Second of all, it wasn't just for one month. They were expecting me to have a three-month pass. How could I afford a three month pass if I'm applying for this low ass paying job? And clearly I'm unemployed right now, which is why I'm looking for work. And they know that. That is my point. Of course, that went over your head, didn't it? You weren't listening because your goal was to find shit that you can correct and be a smart ass about. A monthly pass is expensive to go from Umeda to Toyonaka. That's first. Second of all, I was taking like three different trains to get there from where I lived. 
And again, $600 is a lot of money when you don't have a job. You want me to lie to you and pretend like I had it like that? I literally gave an example in my video talking about how a lot of y'all white people can't understand because you come from perfect little loving backgrounds where mommy and daddy put you on their credit card or you have your credit together and you have money and this, that, and the other. Well, that's not my story. Welcome to real life. Everyone doesn't have silver spoon treatment like how you do. I was also honest with the fact that I put myself in a bad situation where I didn't have money. Am I supposed to lie? But that's also besides the point. That has nothing to do with that. Even if I had a whole savings put aside, who spends $600 on a brand new job up front to buy a three month pass to save their cheap ass employer money? Also smart ass, if you listen to my video, just as I told, you know, Colonial Karen, at least I think I did, because now that video was a while ago. I don't even remember everything I said inside of this video, because it's old. Just as I told her, I believe I did, or at least I'm telling you right now. If you are looking for a job that pays you $2,500 a month, it is extremely unlikely that you have $600 just lying around. Who wants to invest that kind of money up front for a low paying job? Most of us can't relate and don't have that money. And I will be honest and be the first to tell you that I don't and I didn't. I find no need to cap to you and pretend to be or have something that I do not. My parents did not pay for me to come to Japan. They don't pay for my crap here. And I didn't get no head start because for a lot of you all, they're like, oh, well, I've been working next amount of time. Yeah. And you probably came here with mommy and daddy's money. So you got a head start that I did not get, that I cannot benefit from. In fact, a little bit of a benefit that I did have was I was fortunate enough to have a student loan to go to school here. Some people can't even say that. Please don't talk to me about that. So anyway, let's move on. That explains, so like I said, it was about, I think, a two or three month pass they were expecting me to have. And mind you, it's not just that. They were expecting me to have it on the first day of work. They didn't explain that to me. And secondly, why would I be trying to save my cheap ass employer money? This is a million dollar company. They're a chain, I think they're the biggest chain school in all of Japan, the biggest chain international school. Why am I trying to save your cheap ass money by buying a three month pass? What? I've had employers that would reimburse me for my daily training for it, don't require me to get a pass, which is how I normally prefer to do it. I hate using passes, they're inconvenient. Techies are okay, but that's another story. What? Do you hear yourself? I cannot read minds. No employer has ever asked me to have a three month pass upon starting. And even if it was a one month pass, don't you think that's important information to tell me before I start instead of having me come there the first day and then being passively mad at me for not having it? Do you hear yourself? Colonizer Chris. So let's move on. Okay, the companies are gonna pay for monthly pass for new employers to have a high turnover rate. They would lose a lot of money, a lot more money than save. That's besides the point. I agree with you and I disagree with you. For starts, if you do choose to quit your job before the money or whatever is, you know, made up for that, they don't give you normally a monthly pass for a year, but a month. Most people that start a job do last for a month. It's not common for people to quit on the first day here or even first week or even first month. Most employees normally last for at least three months here, but normally I would say most people finish about six months of their contract, if not the entire contract, and make it the full year. So that's completely irrelevant, not to mention foreigners quitting their job, people, as you say, is irrelevant to this case. It doesn't matter if you have a high turnover rate. That's besides the point. You asking me to get this myself and deciding, oh, I'm not going to do this because we have a high turnover rate, which they didn't say that. I'm the one saying that they have a high turnover rate. They didn't say that to me. And actually, according to this school, since they were new, they appear to have kept a lot of their teachers. They weren't really in desperate need of rehiring people that quit, but rather the school was expanding and growing. So I'm explaining that the company overall, Kids Still, is known for having a high turnover rate. Most foreigners here working at international school work for them. That's my point. There's kids do, and there's another school. I forget the name of it, but whatever. So yeah, I hear what they're saying. Like, oh, it's a high turnover rate. They could lose money from, you know, you not coming to work. You quit. But yeah, that's the point. If you were to quit, let's say they bought me a three-month pass, which that's rare for a company to do, but I did have a job that did that. If they do buy your three-month pass, how it works is when you quit your job, your last paycheck, they just deduct it out of that. 
and or they bill you for it. And most people here are not going to be bogus and, you know, not pay their employer back whatever money they owed, et cetera, or give back the past. That's not the type of situation that you normally deal with here. And again, that's why I said month, not three months. I wasn't asking about me a three-month pass. I'm saying one month. And I gave an example explaining how even my first job that I had here, as well as the job I had after that, they paid for my transportation right up front, immediately upon starting. If you can't relate, just say that. I did not say that was the standard for working here. I said there are companies that do it. That was my point. But I should have known. I was working for a low-ass company like kids do, that mass hires foreigners from overseas, degreeless people, etc., which you might be yourself. According to what you said inside your comment, it makes me believe you are as we go further down. So anyway, let's move ahead. All right, asking for a pay advance on your first day when you've had a month to prepare. Not bring the correct documents or the uniform is ridiculously unprofessional. Lots to unpack here. Seems like a valid point. But here goes the thing. Asking for a pay advance is irrelevant to what you felt like I should have done on my first day working there, which is training, might I add. Sorry that I'm human and I forgot to bring my uniform. And by forgot to bring my uniform, it was just a pair of pants. Easy to forget. I didn't have a formal uniform yet. They were supposed to be giving me my uniform, but it didn't cross my mind. My uniform is only going to consist of my shirt. I wasn't thinking about the pants. Even although I was preparing to do this stuff last night, I ran out of time. And then I forgot about it entirely by the time morning came. That was not a big deal to the company. They didn't care. They didn't ask me about it. In fact, it was perfect timing because the day that I didn't have my uniform, they were practicing for sports day. So everyone was wearing black pants just like me. I got saved. I was extremely lucky. They didn't even tell me that that was going to be the dress code. So had I bought the tan khaki pants like how they wanted me to, I would have been the only one wearing them. Don't need your advice, smartass. Don't know what you're talking about. Secondly, let's jump ahead to what you said first. You had a month to prepare. A month to prepare what? Do you not hear what I was saying to you? I explained that I did not have money. If you don't have money and you're saving the money that you do have to be able to do things like pay for your utilities, your rent, for transportation, for food, for the time being while you're not working at the moment, and for the time while you're waiting to actually start your job, why would you waste your money buying documents that your job is asking you for? Sorry, but having a Drew Mean Ho or a My Number card is not going to put food in my mouth when I'm starving to death. Like, think about that for a second. Are you going to sacrifice having food and electricity to get documents together for your job? No. It might sound logical because, oh, long term, but in the short term, does it? Secondly, how do I know that I'm going to get this job or not? They can change their mind. I've signed no contract at this point. There was no official start date. And sorry, not a big deal. Most companies don't give a shit about paperwork. It can be done at any time. Their biggest concern is you showing up to work. They don't care about the legal crap. You're also ignoring the situation that I had. There was no problem with them asking me to bring it. It was the attitude, the unprofessionalism, and the act of, oh, this has to be done right now. I was not new to Japan when I started this job. I've been here for years by that point, and I've been here even longer. I know how working here goes. I know what's important. I know what's not. I know how paperwork goes. That was not so serious where it had to be done right, right there, right now. It wasn't that big of a deal. That was my point. And even if it was, your goal is to get a new teacher to fill a position. And you have limited teachers, limited sources at the time. Probably not the best idea to come off as rude and disrespectful because what are you going to do? You're going to make me quit and choose other options. As you even say yourself, I'm a native English speaker. I can work for someone else, which is why I had avoided working for them. Their salary was trash and the interview process was long. I got lucky and they were desperate and I got to cut a lot of the interview process, but it was still longer than I would have liked to have had. And the pay was shit. <laughs> but okay, back on subject. Um, and ridiculously unprofessional. That is the equivalent of saying showing up to your first day at your job at McDonald's is, is ridiculously unprofessional. That's what type of job kids do is. That is literally the bottom of the bottom of international schools. Them and all the other, if your school is a chain school, meaning that they have more than three, you know, different schools, it's not a privately small owned company, and it's a franchise, you're basically working at McDonald's, <laughs> okay? Ridiculously unprofessional. Bitch, I don't give two shits. Sorry, I'm human. I forgot my uniform. 
and by uniform my tan khaki pants which who the fuck wears those in japan <laughs> they're asking you to buy something before you even get started normally international schools here don't give a shit about your pants they normally only require you to wear a t-shirt which is generally a t-shirt or a polo that's how it normally goes which they were providing for me in my experience there normally is not a set pant color for you to wear you can normally wear any color pants but if there is a set pants color they don't normally care about the specific kind of pants and when they do it's always black because everybody owns a pair of black pants how many people have tan khaki pants guys are more likely to have it but girls don't wear that shit some girls have it, but it's not really in style and people don't normally wear it unless you work retail. Like back when I worked in the U.S. and I worked at Starbucks and might have been another job too, I was required to wear tan pants, but I've never had that requirement here in Japan. It's something new to me. And again, having no money and eating food and shit, sorry, I'm not trying to prioritize having a fucking pair of pants. They'll get over, they'll get over me not having on my pants. They're going to provide me with the shirt. That was my mindset. And I honestly had completely forgot by the time it was the next day. Don't eat your smart ass remarks on that. But anyway. Um, you seem quite entitled thinking you should have been given a pay advance. You repeat often that it's not what happened, but the way it was handled. Because that's the truth. You're also ignoring everything that I said leading up to that. As I said already, that was the icing on the cake. The fact that I didn't feel welcome there. I felt like I was given the cold shoulder. I felt like I was being watched like a hawk. I felt like the staff was really petty and they were snitching on stuff. And I did not get a good first experience working at my first day. The dumb training that had you go through, like having to know a certain amount of number of students' names and remember how this process is done, even although they didn't do the process the right way and being timed or how long it takes you to write stuff. All this other little stupid petty type of crap. And then being embarrassed in front of everyone for asking, sorry, but that is unprofessional. And that was a problem. It's the way it was handled. It's one thing for you, to, and I said this in my video, it would be one thing for them to say, we can't give you a pay advance. Like you just got started. We need to work here for at least X amount of time. I'm really sorry. Like, is there any way you can do? I would totally understand that. Can't even be mad. I probably honestly still quit because I can't get back and forth to work. But you're going to embarrass me in front of the office staff, embarrass me in front of my coworkers play games with me and pretend like you're going to give me the money and then don't give it to me. Um, sorry. The way that was handled is unprofessional and you're completely ignoring all of that shit to say, well, you should have never asked for it. That's the equivalent of basically victim blaming was what you basically just did. It's like if a girl were to go to a bar and she goes out with a guy and they're drinking and talking together and she wakes up the next morning and finds out she was art and she's inside of a hotel room. And you say, well, you shouldn't have been out drinking. So you're completely ignoring the fact this guy's an arpist. And your only complaint is you shouldn't have been out drinking. Which, don't get me wrong. Yeah, sure. If you can't handle your liquor, you probably do need to watch your shit. But let's keep it real. You're avoiding the fact that this person is an arpist. And you're passing the blame onto the victim by saying you shouldn't have been there. Sure, we can help ourselves out by avoiding situations where bad people are going to go. Bad people might do stuff by limiting our intake of alcohol. But your anger, your critique needs to be directed towards the arpist. In this situation, I am the employee. I don't run a business. It's not my job to be, quote unquote, professional working for McDonald's. It is your job as the employer to know how to handle things professionally. If you're working at McDonald's and you do something really crazy and drastic, your boss is not going to have you come into work and fire you in front of everybody. They're not going to go off on you in front of everyone about the fact you can't afford to get back and forth to work. You're taking a bus? Really? That is a private conversation that they will have with you inside of the back of the office or over the phone. If your employer doesn't do that, I'm sorry, that's unprofessional. And that would be a problem with the way it was handled. That's the issue. That's not what you got out of it, though. You, what you're getting out of it is, I want to find some shit to correct this bitch on. Because she should have had her coins together, so she wouldn't have needed theirs. I'm working for you, and I'm making you money. I'm making you rich. I'm lining your pockets by being a low-ass salary teacher. I'm sorry, but me asking for you to give me enough money to get back home 1,000 fucking yen is not asking for a lot of shit. 
even a monthly pass. I didn't ask them to give me a three month pass. I just wanted a monthly pass. And if not monthly, okay, fine, can I have money for the week? I'm working for you. I'm making you money. Not asking for a lot of shit. This isn't the U.S. I'm talking about Japan. And my home country, honestly, they probably still would do that. As a teacher. But if not, okay. It would be handled in private. I'm not saying you have to say yes to anything that I demand. I literally said this in the video. I'm wasting my time. It's one thing that I learned about being here in Japan. I'm going to say this at the end. I was going to say this at the end. When you are talking to a white person, man, unless they choose to listen and are willing to learn and be corrected, you are wasting your breath. Because they, shoot, Kevin Samuels also did, always talking about black uh, women have the need to be right. No, 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 no. That is white people, man. You can't tell them Karens, colonizers. Shit. Man, if they decide in their mind that it's a duck, that motherfucker is a duck. It don't matter what the fuck they looking at. If they decide something is so, it's so, you can't argue with them. You can't get them to change their mind. They don't care about shit that you say. Their goal is to listen to find shit to correct you on instead of being like, wow, you were mistreated. And it's really funny because when they get mistreated by something or someone or feel like they were, they're the entitled ones. They're the ones that will tell you about how they were treated and how they didn't like this experience. But if you as a black person, and this is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about race. Oh my God, colonizer Chris and colonial Karen gonna lose their shit. Then y'all lose your crap over that. But when you feel like you're being mistreated, then you want everyone to listen to you believe your story. But if I say I'm being mistreated, I don't feel like this is a good environment. And I feel like there's some tension here because of my race. It's all in your mind. It doesn't matter. It's whatever. Bitch, you're not black. Shut the fuck up. So anyway, back on subject. It's a waste of time even like making videos like this. Because like I said, you can't change their opinions. They have inside their mind. Racism doesn't exist. Anything you say is wrong because they're the experts in Japan. They know everything. Bitch, I've been in Japan for a long time too. So your point. But okay. Um, yeah, so like I said, that is exactly what the problem was. It's not them saying no to me. It's the way it was handled. Also, by just asking for a pay advance, you're leaving out what it was for. I asked if I could have at least a pay advance to cover my transportation. I said that several times in the video, and I wrote it too. Not a matter of needing them to pay for my food, pay for my electricity, pay for my rent. No, no, no. Just enough money to pay to get to and from work for a day, a week, or a month. They refuse to do any of those things. That was the problem. That's what I meant by pay advance. When you are a franchise owner with a brand new school and you are desperately looking for teachers, that is not a lot to ask for. You don't own a school, Colonial Chris. So I don't need your input. But all right, where do we go? Um, then continue to get mad about it. I'm mad about the way it was handled. What the fuck do you mean? Then continue to get mad about it. He says, it's not what happened, but the way it was handled. Then continue to get mad about it. That is the point. I am not mad about not getting it. I'm mad about how it was handled. You can tell me no in private. Yeah, it would still feel like you're stingy and greedy. You have a big ass company and you got all these kids making all this money. Your school is growing. You're a franchise owner. I'm asking you directly as the owner. Why would that not upset you? That would be the equivalent to not just working at Amazon warehouse. Let's say you working directly in Jeff Bezos fucking mansion. And you tell Bezos, man, I don't have enough money, you know, to get back and forth to work for a week. Owner of Amazon. And he says, you can't ask somebody else? Bitch, why are you determined to that I have to wait an entire month to get paid? Pay advances are not taboo in Japan. They're not taboo in the U.S. either. You can ask for them. That's why they exist. Sorry to break it to you. That shows that y'all have that slave mentality. You are so used to working for an employer, being a slave, being treated like shit. Y'all feel guilty for asking for shit that you are entitled to. They don't have to say yes to you every time. But you're making them money. 
I'm sorry to tell you this, um, colonizer Chris, I don't know if you have a degree or not, but especially when you do, you learn how to negotiate shit. For example, myself, I turn down jobs all the time because I have a degree, I'm a native English speaker and I'm experienced as a teacher. I know my work. And that's why, as I said before, I wasn't going to work for them. I don't just say, oh, why should we be grateful to have this job because this is Japan? No. I've been given a pay advance before. I've received my money for my monthly pass. I'm not gonna settle for less when I don't have to, especially when I need shit. You want me to show up to work every day and make you money, right? You need somebody to watch your kids, right? You gotta take care of your staff. This is why the turnover rate is high. Being petty and doing dumb shit like this. I don't care what you want to do, what you think is professional or not. You are at my mercy. You have no Americans, no young females, no native English speakers to work your position. You are at my mercy. You need me. Even when this pandemic mess is over, hopefully one day, even with them opening the border and allowing people to work here, they have always had a high turnover rate. It doesn't make a difference. My value stays the same because the majority of you all don't have degrees. And when you have a degree, it doesn't have shit to do with education. Then you lack teaching experience. You lack professional development. You lack certificates. I run circles around you. That is my point. I'm not talking about you in particular, Colonizer Chris, because I don't know your academics and background, to be honest. <laughs> I'm talking about in general. I know how to negotiate. I know what I'm worth. I know what I can get. I'm not basing it off of, well, some jobs do this. I literally said that in my video that I get it, not all jobs do. But I'm saying you are at my mercy. You need me. As an employer, it's dumb of you to decide, I would rather lose you as an employee, waste two to three months worth of time and money with hiring you, training you, having you start, giving you a uniform, than give you 10 measly fucking dollars. That makes no sense from a business side since you want to talk about business and what you should do as an employer, since you think you know so much, colonizer, Chris. I hate smart-ass white people. But anyway, back on subject. Now it is about race, colonizer, Chris. And colonial Karen, calm down. I ain't got time for your bullshit today either. Well, actually, I do. That's why I'm replying to this shit, because I'm bored. Just woke up, too. Let's see. Almost done with this. Lucky not get a part-time job for the month. You weren't working. Osaka is a big city, and during the pandemic especially, it's very simple for a native English speaker such as yourself to find some work. I posted once in the group of Facebook and got 15 offers in a space of two hours. Oh my gosh, where do we start with this part? Okay. Do you hear what you just said? So during the time that I'm waiting to hear back whether I get this job or not, and then find out that I'm going to be starting, but later on, I should immediately start looking for a part-time job that's going to take time to interview for, get hired from, going to pay me pennies, and then I'm supposed to quit that job, violating my year contract with them, to keep this full-time job. I thought we were following rules, colonizer Chris, that we're being professional. That's not professional to me. Secondly, when your visa is expiring, it is extremely difficult to find a job that will hire you. I have a job that's starting in a month. By the time I will find a job, I will be quitting that job to start another job. And should I quit that job, start another job, and they decide, oh, since you violated our contract, since you didn't stay for the full month, we're keeping your salary. Just like how this place did, then what, colonizer Chris? Also, dumbass, if I don't have money, how do I get to a part-time job? Third, colonizer Chris, when you have a real degree like how I do, when you're not here on a sham marriage like how I'm not, you cannot work part-time jobs here unless they deal with teaching like my fucking degree was for, you dumbass bitch. Excuse my language. That's my point. I cannot work at 7-Eleven. I cannot work at, you know, H&M or whatever else. I can't work at the grocery store. I'm limited to doing professional work. If it ain't professional, it's not engineering. It's not teaching, it's not humanities related. I cannot work there legally. Why waste my time explaining that to you? Since you know so much, you should already know that. It doesn't, the math ain't mathing, you dumb bitch. 
if I were to start a job, if I start looking for a job a month before, well, okay, another job I'm not going to start for a month. Let me look for a part-time job. Most jobs are not going to hire you that night. It's going to take at least a couple of days or within a week if you can get a job fast. And mind you, this time of year, most places are not hiring. This is between October and November. Most places that are hiring, even for part-time work, they're looking for people that can start in January or April. No earlier than January or January, March, April-ish. Early spring, late winter. I believe I talked about that in my video. But if not, since you live here in Japan, according to what you're saying, or I'm assuming that you do, you should know that then. If I don't have money to get to the full-time job, how do I have money for the part-time job? I would also need a pay advance and it doesn't change anything. Except now, my pay advance will be even smaller because a part-time job is going to pay me like $10 to $15 an hour. That's pennies. Do you hear yourself? Dumbass. All right. <laughs> then talking about posting in a Facebook group. You gave the worst example possible. But actually the best because it helps my argument. Facebook groups. Craigslist. Crap like that. While you can sometimes find good things from those places. They are garbage jobs. Risky. Mom and pop shops. Mom and pop schools. A lot of the stuff that is posted inside of those places are offering you all anywhere from $10 to $13 an hour. It's also typically located in strange areas, far away, difficult to get to. Costs money. Attending interviews costs money. Going to work costs money. Sorry, but I was not on the verge of being homeless quite exactly at this point. I am not desperate enough to just work for anybody. I still have standards for where I want to work at, which is exactly why I still turned down working there. I didn't say, well, since I don't have a full-time job, I guess I'll just walk six hours to work every day until I get paid. No, I decided I knew my work and I knew I'd find better. And what do you know? Let me take you on a little trip, colonizer Chris. I love doing this now. I love being able to show you where the fuck I live. This is why I don't need advice from white people. I am living in Shibuya, Tokyo now, thanks to not listening to you and Karen that think they know so damn much. Look at my life. I can't even afford this place. You're trying to tell me what the fuck I should do. Did you see that colonizer, Chris? And if you look straight ahead, you can actually see my Fuji from here. Isn't it beautiful when you don't listen to white people? But okay, what do I know? That sunlight looks nice. Yeah, y'all just amaze me with that card. I'm living in Shibuya, Tokyo. You know so much about professionalism. I'll probably make two times your salary, boy. Not even including the money that I get from Patreon and YouTube. I ain't got time to be arguing with you. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, instead of just being like, well, I'm glad I can't relate to that. I've never been in that situation. Instead, it becomes schooling because you got to tell me how you would have handled the situation and what you would have done. And basically, all you're saying is the employer was right, you're an unprofessional hoe, and you deserve what happened to you. That's basically what you said to me. And that's besides the point. It's not when somebody has been armed, because that's the best example I can give, you don't explain what they could have done to keep that from happening. You sympathize with them. You have empathy. And you think about how they feel. You think about what's going through their mind, their situation. The anger is directed at the person that did them wrong. As I said in my video, I don't care if I came to work smoking weed, I stank, I ain't clean up the night before. I don't care what I did. If I worked my shift, you let me stay and do work, you pay me. That is my point. You are completely ignoring that to try to school me on everything else I did. It's just like what a Colonial Karen did. Another bitch too, like when I was talking about my job at abroad. It became a complete 
change the topic. We're not going to talk about them blackmailing you. We're not going to talk about them spreading rumors about you. Let's talk about what you did as a teacher wrong. That didn't even have anything to do with why I quit. I was just telling you the whole story as to my start from working there to the end. Never got reprimanded. Never got suspended. Never got, they never fired me. I quit on my own. Both jobs. Please stop. Why do y'all like doing that so much? I mean, it makes me so angry too because it's like, man, I would love to be white. I would love it. I would love it. Silver spoon lifestyle because y'all love telling people shit. And it's like, instead of being like, Oh, you do X, Y, and Z, being the armchair experts. Okay, I love being. Telling me how to pick the cotton. I would love for you to spend a day in my life and have my situations and my shit. Be grateful to God that you can't relate to me. Be grateful that you had help, that you have money, that you can't relate to my stories and my situations, that that wasn't what happened to you. Instead of trying to tell me what I need to do, what I should have done, and what I did wrong. I'm not asking you what I did wrong. There is no argument. Anything that you try to say is fallacious. Not a matter of shutting you down, being real. Let's put this in black and white terms. If you work your shift at McDonald's and you are not wearing your uniform, does your employer get to say, we are not going to pay you? No. If you are working at McDonald's and you tell your employer, I don't have enough money to go to work anymore. I need a pay advance. And they tell you no. And you tell them, well, I have to quit then. I'm sorry. And they decide we're not going to give you your last paycheck. Is that right? No. Do we get mad at the McDonald's employee and say, well, they should have got their pockets up. That's their fault. No. You realize, well, I mean, shit, like you ain't got nobody to ask for money. What you do with your last paycheck? We can think that out of mind. I mean, you should have saved some more money so you can be in such a situation. But that's besides the point. That's what I'm saying. The problem is not you saving money. It's not you needing to work six jobs while you wait for one to start. It's the employer's handling of the situation. You can decline a request from your employee without humiliating and embarrassing them. You can be cordial and speak to me as a new employee without being my best friend and being all up under me. I ain't ask you to do that. You can say, I'm sorry, Miss Bowling, but we can't give you a pay advance. Without taking it and putting it out there in front of everyone, and then not even just telling everyone, the fact that the whole thing was set up just to tell me no. Why have me go into the office, ask me what I need, have me sign stuff, ask me for my, my number information, et cetera, just say, oh, I'm sorry, we, we can't give you that money. What was the purpose in having me do it? Why put me through all of this just to tell me no? Why ask me all these questions just to say no? That was my point, but that's not what you got because of course, you're a colonizer, Chris. You only came here to try to defend the employer, to tell me that I'm wrong, welcome to Japan, you don't know shit, bitch. And so yeah, let's get to that part to you about the 15 offers. What good does it do to have 15 offers and all 15 of them fucking suck? They're not going to all start right away. They're not all legitimate offers. They're not all possible for you to get to and from. Osaka is a big city just like Tokyo. Getting a job in Tokyo doesn't mean you can easily get to it. You want to know where I work? I work an hour away from my home in Shibuya. Why? Because it pays more to work in the countryside. If I did not have money, if I cannot afford my rent in this place right now, which the old me could not, I pay what some people make in an entire month is my utilities and rent here. That is over $2,000 USD. You probably cannot afford that, can you? By yourself, working one job. Working your low ass teacher salary. Clearly, I know how to make moves. Clearly, I know how to make money. Out of all the shit that I've been through, look where the fuck I am right now. That's why I'm arguing with y'all white bitches. Y'all love telling me what I did wrong, what to do, et cetera. But look at where I am and look at where you're not. Why you click on my video then if you know so much? Why are you defending this cheap ass company? Do you work for them? Do you own one of their franchises? Are you a franchise owner? Why are you taking it so, why are you so offended by taking it to heart? 
Y'all don't comment on shit until you find something where I'm telling you a personal story where, oh, this bad thing happened to me. And instead of being like, man, like, you know, that sucks or whatever. Like, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, the employer's bad about this. It's always, white people have to do, they either have to do one or both. Either they have to tell you what you should have done differently. Or they play, they play the safe side. They do both sides. So, like, oh, like, you know, I feel really bad for you. Yeah, the employer was bad. But blah, 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 blah. You're a bad bitch. That's exactly what they say to you. You're a horrible employee. That's what they ultimately say. And it's like, you don't have to agree that I was a star employee or whatever. I'm not asking for that. I already got that from my company. Pass my evaluation of flying colors. No recommendations other than wrap my lesson explaining what we just did. Put student work up on the wall. More student work. That was it. Fix the student work part. Fix the evaluation, you know, recommendation of ending my lesson by explaining what we just did. Was given a raise. Given a new contract. I don't need y'all advice. I know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> really just, and that's the thing too. It's like my videos telling my story. In both videos, I ain't asking what the fuck you think I should do, you dumb bitch. I don't go to white people for advice. Fuck out of here. Y'all niggas pay me. <laughs> Crying about why Sachiko don't want to ride your dick anymore despite you going out to the gym and working out and giving her three babies and shit. Shooting her pussy up. <laughs> and then try to come onto my videos, tell them what the fuck to do with my life. Where your money at? Where your job? Where are your certificates? What's your degree? How much you making by yourself? I don't need advice from you. I'm doing just fine on my own. No spouse visa. I don't care what the fuck I did in the past. I don't care what shit I've been through. Look at where I am. And it's only going to go up from here, bitch. It's, whole, it's white people like you. Colonizers, like y'all, y'all, y'all colonizers are what motivates me to stay in Japan. And it's so funny because I get comments from y'all every once in a while, oh, go back to Africa and make about race. Do y'all not realize that when y'all bitches say that shit, it literally motivates and encourages me to do the opposite. You are literally encouraging me to stay here longer. If you want me and my African ass to leave Japan, don't say shit to me. When you tell me what to do, where to go, what I did wrong, you try to play teacher's pet Japan edition and tell me how to be a good gaijin, all you're doing is making me realize, damn, the obsession is real. You can't go anywhere in the world without white people being on your ass about shit. Don't make it about race. Yeah, until Sachiko run off with your kids. Till she won't suck your dick anymore. Then you understand race. Oh, when it's convenient for you. When you're being mistreated and it's obvious, then you understand race. When you get hit by that truck and the police play dumb, I'm sorry, we can't find the person. When you end up in a situation and get art, then it's like, oh, the Japanese man, what? Then, oh, well, I, I thought it wasn't about race, Karen. Chris, I thought that race didn't matter. I thought we were playing the race card. That was a black thing. You can't see color. Which might be true. I mean, you know what they say, people that have light-colored eyes, you see color differently than a dark-eyed bitch like me. All, all of the colors that you see are, how can I say, augmented. You see colors as being lighter than what they really are. And I say what they really are, because the majority of the world is Asian, meaning that most people have dark brown eyes. Which means that your vision is fucked up. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, I got what he was trying to say. But for starters, it's insensitive. And two, it's not what the video is about. I'm telling you my story and why I quit. And instead of you being like, oh, okay, this is a bad environment. You didn't like working there. You felt uncomfortable being there. And then not the fact that I didn't get the pay advance, but the fact that they handled it in a way to embarrass, humiliate, and degrade me was the icing on the cake to decide not to go back. That was the issue. You completely ignored all of that. And what is the line you have for critique for them? Let's read your last line. Some of the things the company did was quite terrible, to be honest. But welcome to Japan, land of zero employee rights, even more so if you're foreign. 
Of course. You have what? One couple of lines out of a whole fucking paragraph of shit you have to tell me about what I did wrong. Just some terrible things. No, no details on what they did wrong. Just some terrible things. But you can detail and tell me what the fuck I did wrong in my story. Okay. Even though I didn't ask you, Colonizer Chris, because like I said, I don't date colonizers and I don't come to you for opinions. Nope. All right. Welcome to Japan. You know, blah, blah, blah. Zero employee rates, even more foreign. So my story gets dismissed because of the country that I'm in, is what you basically just said. Another fallacious argument. Why is it so hard for y'all white people to just talk about the fact that race does matter? That Japan not being perfect is not an argument. And that that's the whole purpose in this damn video. Like you clicked on a video knowing it was going to be somebody complaining about the country that you love and worship so much. So why, why, if it hurts you so bad, if it hurts you so bad, why watch? You know what I don't do? I don't go and search KKK forums. I don't go and search why do white people think black? I don't give two fucks about y'all colonizers because I don't date y'all niggas, okay? That's what we need to get out of the way right away. Why do y'all do that shit? Why? You can see in the thumbnail I'm black. You can see in the thumbnail what this video finna be about. You know what your stance is on these topics. So why watch it? If you already have inside your mind, you're going to be annoyed, irritated, and you think this is Japan, suck it up, buttercup. Why, why click on my shit? I'm genuinely curious. Please tell me, white people. Y'all say that we the ones. They got anger issues. Mad. It's y'all motherfuckers. Y'all got to storm and invade every country. You got to argue and fight with every person. You are the entitled ones. You are the ones that everybody want to hear your damn opinion on their life. I ain't asking you what the fuck I need to do with my life, bitch. The fuck I look like doing that shit. <laughs> I don't, like I said, I don't come to colonize for, I don't pay y'all bitches for shit. When I need help, I'm not paying or asking or looking for you. Please know that. And I'm doing just fine by not doing that. Y'all don't care about racial issues. Y'all don't care about complaints about Japan until it deals with you. Then all of a sudden you jump on board. Then your eyes are open. You have this magical awakening. It wasn't just in black people's mind all this time. Arguing that this is Japan is just proving my point. I didn't say this doesn't happen somewhere else. I'm saying this bad thing happened to me. This is my story. This is why I wouldn't work there. This is my experience. That is what I'm saying. You chose not to take it that way. You decided on your own. Let me correct her. Let me tell her what she did wrong. Let me ignore the fact the employer did this unprofessional thing. The employer didn't pay her, which was the whole purpose in the video. Let me ignore her work environment. Let me ignore the fact they embarrassed and humiliated her and didn't pay her on top of that. And play mind games about how or when she would get paid. Let me ignore all of that stuff. And make my own narrative of what really happened. You also tried to twist what I was saying about, you know, me saying the way it was handled. You just answered my own question. The way it was done is what made me upset. I don't see what's so hard to get about that. If it were done appropriately, I wouldn't have been upset. Would I have been? Well, I'll be honest. Yes, I would have been upset, but not enough to make no damn video on it. I've been told no for things that I wanted, including a pay advance. In fact, I didn't even mention some my video about abroad. But I actually asked abroad if I could receive my full salary because it would help me more at the moment. And they apologized said that we can't do that. I think they capped it at giving me half or something like that. Did I mention that in my video? Nope, not until right now because it wasn't necessary. They went about it professionally. My boss was loud, but he spoke to me in his office and tried to make it seem private. He didn't go around at the time when I was working there and tell everyone, hey, do you know Miss Wren asked for a pay advance? Yeah, that dumb bitch thought that we were going to give her her whole month's salary. Yeah, she's out of her mind. Why doesn't she have her money? No. You know what he did? He had empathy. He sympathized with me and told me that I was his daughter. He told me if I needed anything else to come back to him. He told me, I want to give you extra so that you have money for food. He told me that he wanted to make sure his teachers were taken care of. And he treated me that way. 
Maybe you can't relate, colonizer Chris, because maybe you don't have the experience that I do. You've never worked for a good employer here. You might not have the credentials that I do. Don't come for me, hon. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you props fine. At least you can admit that the company, you're too quite terrible. That's all you can say. Some things quite terrible. I'll give you props. At least you said that says a lot for a colonizer. You admitted they did something wrong. Wow, I'm proud of you. You, you admitted they were wrong about something. At least you said something. Yeah. So I'm not entirely wrong. I'm not just entirely crazy. But that is besides the point. Like I said, it doesn't matter if I broke all the rules in the school. If you felt like I was a bad employee, it doesn't make a difference. You pay me, man. I did my work. You let me work my shift. And you wanted me to come back. I didn't even just quit the job because I hated it because I wanted to do that too. I didn't plan to stay there for a year. I just needed a visa. And I mentioned that in the video. I needed a visa. My time was short. I needed a full-time job. I was behind on my rent. I had stuff to handle and I kept it real. Because think about y'all. See, white people don't know how to handle this. Y'all so used to people lying to you, hiding stuff, withholding information, and telling you only the things to make the other person look bad. I tell the whole story when I do my story times. I tell you where I was coming from, where they were coming from, what led up to it. Y'all don't know how to react to that type of stuff because you're so used to the story being everybody around me is bad. I did nothing wrong. I have no idea why these things happened to me. But then you twist it and somehow get out of it. I was bad and this was the result of me doing something bad instead of it being yeah, you you know should have handed your money better so you wouldn't have to ask. But that's not what the video is about. And that's besides the point. I didn't do anything unprofessional. I didn't. I, I said that in the video. I didn't ask in front of the parents. I didn't ask in front of the other staff. I worked my entire shift before I asked. I, I don't get that. So I'm supposed to pretend like I'm not starving. I'm supposed to pretend like I don't need money, and pretend like I'm okay with walking three hours back home just to avoid seeming unprofessional. But then you give me unprofessional advice by advising me to work a part-time job while I'm waiting to start a full-time job, which that doesn't make any fucking sense. First, I need to find a job that's gonna hire me right now, not a week from now, not a month from now, but that's going to start me right now, today, tomorrow, or in a few days, within a week, basically. Two, it's gonna overlap me starting my new job. And three, even for part-time jobs, you sign contracts here. Unless you're working at 7-Eleven or some shit, but I don't even know how that crap works because I never worked one of those places. I'm blessed to have not needed it. My visa doesn't permit me to do that. And even if it did, it would be bad to work for a company for one month. So you sit up here trying to give me professional advice, but then you give me unprofessional advice. You talk shit about how much money it costs for uh, transportation when you don't know my home station and you don't know, didn't listen. It wasn't just for one month, you dumb bitch. And the expense was high. I can't remember how much it was. It was somewhere between like about $12 or $13 for one day. I don't remember the exact amount. So I'm not even going to fucking lie to you, but it was high. It was expensive. And the trade-off is, yes, there are cheaper ways to do it, but then it takes more time. But in that situation, no, there was not a cheaper way. Because from this place, I think I was using both the JR, I was using the, um, not the JR line. I was using the Honky line. Mito Suji, I think, and Chuo line, wasn't I? I can't remember how I was doing that. But anyway, I had to do like two diff at least two transfers back then. I can't remember. But yeah, it wasn't just for one month. And it wasn't the fact that I was being asked to have it. I wasn't asked to have that a month in advance. They asked me if I had it the day of starting my work and were shocked that I didn't have it. I've never had an employer ask me for that. And it wasn't because they care. It was because they were trying to find ways to cut corners. They wanted to pay me as little money as possible. I worked for another company, which I didn't want to talk about this, but I will say it here in this video. Hama Kids. And they did a very similar thing. They, they wanted me to pay as little money as possible so that they have to reimburse as little money as possible. And they didn't care how long it required me to walk, how long it made my commute. They wanted me to walk 20 fucking minutes away from my house when there was a train seven minutes away from my house 
not including the fact that it was the JR line and the lot, a much longer wait for the train to come. Crowded their train. More crowded train, crowded. <laughs> More crowded train. Longer wait time. More transfers. Just to save a couple of dollars. It was like, what, one or two dollars cheaper a day? I can't remember. Y'all making millions of dollars. And paying me an extra $40 is going to break the bank. They choose which route you get to and from work. Maybe you want to lie about my address. Really pissed me off. They didn't check IDs. I probably would have. I'd never experienced that before, but it was my first time where they specifically were like, no, you have to take this specific route. We want to pay as little money as possible. And to me, it's like, okay, this is the closest train station to my house. Why would I walk 20 minutes away just because there's another option that I could do? They wanted me to take the Osaka loop line. No, <laughs> that, that makes no sense. So what did I do? Instead, I was like, you know what, forget it. I'll pay for my transportation out of my own pocket because I know having to walk 20 minutes to and from the train station every day, not including my walk through the metro station, is going to drive me crazy. I don't want to do that. This is the same situation. They, well, not same situation. This is a similar situation in that sense. While they did actually pay for my transportation up front, but we're only going to do the cheapest option possible. This company did not. That was my comparison for you. Both companies are being cheap, but they handled it differently. Both companies are million dollar companies, franchises, but they handled it differently. And guess what? I'm not working. Neither of those companies. I quit both of those damn jobs because unlike you, colonizer Chris, I know my work and I know that I can get paid more money. So what do I do? When I see a better option, I get my shit and I leave. Being humble and modest and professional like you, Colonizer Chris, because we know how patriotic you are. You know everything, Colonial Karen, since y'all know so much shit. Show me how to make a bag. Show me how to make money. Show me how to get a better job. Get yourself one. Then show me. Tell me what to do. Y'all know so much. Y'all know how to live my life better than I do. Of course you do, because I'm sitting here telling you all my problems, all my faults, while you are sitting in the comfort of your own home where you get to judge and critique. I would love to see you switch and live my life and do everything the right way and magically end up here in Shibuya, Tokyo and this nice ass penthouse. I would love to see you pull that shit off. But you can't because you ain't fucking me. You don't know what I know. You don't have the experience or the credentials that I do. But even if you were me and you had all of my shit, you wouldn't know how to get here like how I did. It ain't just luck, baby. I put in work and I'm fucking blessed. So <laughs> I'm done. My point is, you can't argue with white people. If they decide that you're going to be wrong, they want to correct you. They will find shit to correct. They will find a way to make you wrong. You cannot be right with them. If they want you to be the bad guy, they want you to be wrong. You will be wrong. You will be the bad guy. There is no going around it. That is that. I ain't said I was no perfect angel. I didn't do shit wrong. My whole video literally says that. I detailed what I did what I said, what they did, what they said. I don't care what I did wrong with how I was dressed, what I did wrong with not having whatever documents I needed to have on that day. It is besides the point. I am human. I'm pretty sure you've gone to work out of uniform before. It's life, especially when you're being asked to have something when you haven't even started working yet when you're young. And on top of that, a strange piece that people don't wear, especially in Japan. Girls don't normally wear pants. Asking me to have a specific color and a weird color at that, tan khaki pants, not even black. I got lucky and happened to have been wearing black pants and I had a nice coworker that offered me to wear her pants. She gave me her pants to wear. I had an option. Nobody complained about that. See how you make up your own shit. Nowhere in the video that I mentioned somebody complained about me being out of uniform. They didn't care. And it was understandable. And you call it very unprofessional. It wasn't the fact that they were like, you needed these documents. So, you know, oh, you're supposed to have the documents today. It was the way it was handled. You can say, oh, I asked you to bring the documents. You know, in a nice professional voice. You don't have to be like eye rolling and seem pissed off and sighing, etc. 
You also ignored the part where I talked about, see how you had no criticism for them? All you could say was, they did some things that were bad. You completely ignored the fact that they had me come up there for a, basically a second tier to sign a contract. That could have been done on the first day of work. That could have been done electronically over the computer. No criticism for those things. No direct critique, I should say. But you can tell me piece by piece what you thought I did wrong when that wasn't the video. I didn't tell you why, why I got fired. I said I quit and they didn't pay me. Please tell me what's one thing I did that would make me worthy of not getting my salary for my day that I work. Explain to me, Colonizer Chris. Colonial Karen, chime in. Please explain to me, what did I do making me not worthy of my pay for me doing my work perfectly? Because I didn't do shit wrong during my day. I worked the entire shift. I stayed late to clean too. Please tell me, what did I do wrong to make me not deserve my pay? Not pay advance. Now we're talking about a month later. Why was I not paid for the day that I worked? I quit after I worked the whole day and it was because I didn't have transportation. It doesn't matter though. I quit my job at abroad. At the beginning, the height of the pandemic, first school year since. Still got my pay. And I did sign a contract with them. So please explain to me. You can't. You do not have the life. You do not have the experience. You do not have the setup, the circumstances, the position that I do. I don't argue with broke people. I don't argue with colonizers. I didn't even reply to your comment, made it to spam. I just let it sit there because it's a waste of my time. I know you're not gonna listen to me because you've already decided in your mind, you're right, I'm wrong. Your goal was to try to drag me. Your goal was to completely ignore the point in the video, which was they didn't pay me and become, well, you shouldn't have done X, Y, Z, whatever. Does that change the fact that they didn't pay me? No. Does it change the fact that they owe me money? No. Does it change the fact they should have legally paid me? No. Then what is the purpose in any of the shit that you're saying? Exactly. Delicious argument. That's all that people can bring to the table. Delicious arguments. You remind me of the same holes that I went to university with. So anyway, back on subject. This is why I don't date white men. This is the reason why I don't care about arguing with Karens and Chris's. And yeah, go ahead and have fun in my comments. Say dumb shit to me. I would just make a video on it. I'm not going to, I don't waste my time arguing in my comments anymore. I said that before in videos. I don't waste my time. I make my money. You talk shit to me. You got things to correct me on. I'll correct you in a video. I waste my time typing or using my mic to talk to my computer and telling you off. Telling you why you're wrong. I'll just let your stuff stay in spam. Might block you. Make a video on you. Make money from it. Don't waste my time. I don't get paid when I comment to you. I make a few people chuckle that bother to read it. I can defend myself better when I talk to you. So that's it, Chris. Sorry that you're a hard ass. Sorry that you think you know so much. Sorry that you can't relate to me. Sorry that you're not real. And I'm sorry that because your life is so perfect, you've never been broke. You've never been on the verge of being homeless. You've handled your money so perfectly. You're so rich. You have your whole life together. You have your spouse. You have your parents that love you and care about you. You have your siblings, your kids, whatever else, your brothers and sisters. You have a perfect life. You've never been in such a desperate situation where you needed money. You've always known what to do next. You're just this perfect being. You know exactly what to do, where to go, whatever that you cannot relate to me. Sorry that I'm not a human prediction book. Sorry that my life is not perfect. My family is not perfect. My money is not perfect, that I've made poor decisions. Sorry that I'm not perfect, Colonial Chris. And I do things wrong. But the only wrong thing I did was working for that company. Me not being able to afford working there and deciding that I'm not going to do work illegally or risk working a job and then risking them not paying me after the first month because I quit before my year contract is up. And like I said, that wasn't even really an option either because actually smart ass, I was looking for part-time job, but that was the issue. Two things, getting to and from work and to the start date. In October and November, most jobs are not hiring. And specifically during that time of year, 
there were pretty much no jobs available. Also, smart ass, people have to want to hire you. And on top of that, I am a YouTuber. I also have a brain, Colonial Chris. I do not go onto Facebook Marketplace or Facebook groups posting shit about what I'm looking for. Two reasons. One, I'm a YouTuber and blogger. I don't do that. Do you see other J vloggers doing that? No. Two, I, I have to be honest. I will never understand people post inside of Facebook groups because you're putting all of your business out there. At best, I might share a joke or some useful information, but people that go there looking for jobs or asking for help with things, etc., people can literally search for you, come across you by chance, be like, oh, I know this person, and see everything that you've ever said. That is dumb. I don't need advice. Colonial Chris, like I said, I took you outside and showed you. Look at where I'm living. You don't know where I work. My patrons do. Look at where I'm working. I am glad that I left this job. I am glad that I don't listen to white people. Because if I did listen to colonizers like you, I wouldn't have what I currently do. My life wouldn't be together. I wouldn't have the money that I do. I wouldn't have the house that I do. I wouldn't have the job that I do. And now guess what, Colonial Chris? I'm a model. Yep. I got a modeling visa. I got sponsored. Should I have stayed at kids dual school? Should I have stayed at home with kids? Should I have stayed at abroad? Should I have pretended like my life is perfect? Like I've never quit a job before. I've never been fired before. I'm perfect. My money is so perfect. I'm never broke. I never, no. And I'm like, you are like being real. I don't get anything out of pretending like I have it all together. I'm telling you that I do right now because that is my situation right now. And I'm telling you what I worked for, but I didn't come from this. I had to work to get myself here. And I will never be ashamed of that. I'm grateful for the experiences that I had along the way. I've learned from them too. But I will not go back on what I said about either of these companies, abroad or kids do. It's the way it was handled. Abroad could choose to not let me back. I didn't make that video because they didn't let me come back there. It was the fact that the reason for not letting me come back was stubbornness. They compared me to a student that left and told their mom that if you withdraw from their school, you can't enroll again. What type of bullshit is that? That's dumb. You're so full of yourself as a school, you bully your students into staying there and say that they can't test the wires of another school. If you decide you wanna try YMCA and you don't like that school and wanna come back, we won't accept you anymore. So choose wisely. What? Like, is this a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship? This is a business. Do you want our money and our student or not? Why do you care? Second issue. I made that video about abroad because they blackmailed me or blackballed me. They tried to stop any other employer from hiring me. If you decided you don't want me, that's cool. But don't stop me from getting another job and try to make me seem like a bad employee when I try to look for another job. And then if that's not enough, then to lie and tell the staff stuff that didn't happen and take it out of context, make me seem like I was a bad employee and try to change the narrative and make it seem like you let me go when I quit. That's why I made that video. Why I made the video on kids do? It wasn't because of working with racist white people. Shit, I'm used to y'all shit. Y'all do it all the time. But that's why I say I don't pay y'all no mind. It's unfortunate. I don't even talk to white people unless they speak to me first because I ain't got time to play mind games. I don't know if you're racist or not. I don't know where your mind is at. I keep my distance. Don't have time for colonial games. I didn't make a video because of that. I explained to you what was going on in my mind. I told you how my head saw everything. I gave you my perspective on everything. That was the video. And if you listened, one of the girls that I talked about in the video was actually black, who I was saying seemed to have not liked me, and I maybe gave her a bad first impression. And even the guy that was interviewing me was a black man. Convenient how you left out that, right? I'm just pulling the race card. They're black too, so now what do you have to say about that? Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> I made that video not because they said, oh, we, you can't have a pay advance. I said it was the way they handled it. And yes, you dumbass colonizer, they handled it unprofessionally and humiliated me. So was I supposed to be happy about it? You seem mad about it. You kept seeing, you said it was the way they handled it, but yet you continuously seem mad. If I'm complaining that something was handled the wrong way, why would I be happy? 
Did you just, did you read what you fucking typed? Of course you did. All right, I'm done. I'm wasting my time arguing colonizers. All I gotta say is this. Kiss my ass, Colonial Chris. And you really can sign up for my OnlyFans, $30. So I don't need your advice. I don't need your opinions. And before you all start, because yep, I just dropped it right there. I got this apartment before I made an OnlyFans. It ain't got shit to do with that. I just have money, experience, balls, and crap that you don't. Mind your business, ho. Listen to the story. I'm not asking you for advice. Sit back and watch it. And quit using the fallacious argument, it's Japan. Welcome to Japan. Zero employee rights. So that takes away from my story how? That just adds to it. I was mistreated as an employee. They didn't pay me. If I made a video talking about racism, do you say, this is America. Welcome to America. Zero rights as a black person? No, you say, stop pulling the race card. So shut the fuck up, dumb bitch. Anyway, I'm done. Bye, colonizer Chris. Goodbye, colonial Karen. Stay off my videos then. You don't like to have to say it? Look, look at me and my black nose and my black lips and my black skin and my black ass. If you don't like what you see in the thumbnail, don't click on my video. Do you understand me, Colonial Chris? If you are triggered by someone having a bad day in Japan, Colonial Karen, don't watch my shit. It's really that simple. Y'all same hoes, oh, I want to be your best friend. I want to fuck you. Please do. No, that's why I don't bother. I don't even reply to messages from white people like that. Nope. Fucking snakes. I hate y'all bitches. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it real. And to my white people that ain't bad, ain't crazy, I'm sorry. I had to drill these motherfuckers because they pissed me off. For the good white people watching this, y'all know who y'all are. I have to put this video out there. It made me really upset. I'm tired of getting crap that. Woke up to getting this stupid ass con uh, comment. What's this nigga name? Kristen. Kristen Bolor or Bowler or whatever the fuck you say your name. You probably German, ain't you? Because it seems similar to my last name. Dumb bitch. Want to knock your goofy ass out? I know it's not all y'all. I, I get on. I don't care what race you are. I've gotten on Jamaicans. I've gotten on African Americans like myself. I don't care where you're from. Anyone can get this. <laughs> so. Again, my point is not you cannot say that I was bad or did something wrong. I, I say what I did wrong in my videos. Like, what do y'all, what more do you want? The problem is when I do tell my side of it, it becomes a hyper focusing on you did X, Y, and Z wrong instead of, wow, this person really screwed. I don't care if I did everything wrong. You don't cheat somebody out of pain and when you owe them. You don't blackmail somebody because they choose to stop working for you. How is that right? Y'all will give two. Two little centimeters of advice for the employee. Not even advice. You're just saying, oh, that company was bad. But you're a horrible teacher. You're unprofessional. You shouldn't have done X, Y, Z. Why were you dressed this way? Why are you doing that? You write a whole story on what I did wrong. Even though the whole video was about them. But your only focus was, this is what you did wrong. I mean, the funny thing is, you're never right. Because the things that you have to say about me, they're wrong. You take things out of context. You misunderstand stuff. You're a lost cause. I'm done. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for listening, hopefully, this time. But we, we all know Colonial Chris and Colonizer, you know, what is it? Co Colonizer Chris and Colonial Karen. We already know you didn't make this point in the video. But if by chance you did, I forgive you for your ignorance. I'm sorry for the white people that aren't horrible, awful people like the people that I'm talking about. Excuse my language. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I had to get some stuff from my chest. But this is what you deal with as a black person. You constantly have white explaining and people trying to tell you, you know, X, Y, and Z, what you did wrong and when race does and doesn't matter, which is interesting. Come from people that don't deal with my crap. How can you, how can you tell me what, when something is or isn't about race when you are not black yourself? How can you tell me my environment is like, you don't know what I'm dealing with, what I'm feeling, et cetera. Just like people, oh, go see the Gizna thing. It hardly happens. You're white. Please do not speak on this. Yeah, Japanese too, so nice. Oh, yeah, Gaijin's on. You're white. Don't speak on it. I don't speak crap on things that I can't really to understand either. I've never had a student call me gorilla sensei or, you know, refer to me as being a monkey or ape or whatever. So do you want to know what? I don't go around looking for black people's videos in Japan because most of the black people here are dark skin. Most black people are dark skin. Which is why there's a fetish with light skin people. I don't go around finding their videos and be like, it sucks to be you. But yeah, I don't, that's really a problem here. That never happens. Because I've never, I've been in Japan for almost six years now. Never happened. Do I go around and shit on people that's happened to? No. 
just because it's not your experience doesn't mean it isn't someone else. I don't have to discredit other people. Good for you. You've always had money. You've never had a bad situation. You think you know exactly what to do because you're the armchair expert. And I'm telling it's easy to tell me what I should do when you're the one hearing about the aftermath and you're sitting back at home on your couch and from the outside, not inside the situation, you can easily tell me what moves I should make. I don't even know how old you are. You might be older than me for all I know. Easy for you to say. This video ain't going forever. Let me stop. We had like four hours. <laughs> so, all right, I'm done. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Sorry I had to say it. I was pissed off. Like, like I said again, sorry for the good white people watching this video. I know it's not all of y'all, but y'all cousins, uncles from other countries or whatever be pissing me off. I'm irritated with it. Had to address it. And of course, I want to make my money off of it. I wanted to respond to that comment. I was, I was just going to trash it, but I was like, nope, it is worthy of a video. So... That's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, please like this video. Leave a comment down below. I'm ready for the smoke, the heat. I'm in the mood for arguments. So go ahead, colonizers. You got some crap to say? Go ahead. I'll, I'll come back to you. So I'll make another video on you. Give me more video ideas. So yeah, that's it. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I hope you'll watch another video. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Comic95. I have a Snapchat at Comic the Savior and a TikTok at Comic the Savior. You can get my blog at Comic95.com. I have a Facebook fan page at Comic95 the Savior. And you can go to my YouTube channel's homepage. I have playlists. You can watch tons of videos here, as well as one that I made addressing Karen. If I forget to link it, you can look for it on your own. It's in my journal's playlist, I believe. But yeah. I hate doing videos like this, but I have to do it. I'm going to defend myself. I'm not your average typical YouTuber just ignores the comment or writes a little nice PR comment. No, I'll let you have the smoke, tell you exactly how it is. So that's it. Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Thank you for the good people that watch my video that are supportive, that understand, and that understand that, you know, while they might not be able to relate, they haven't been in that situation. They have a good family. They have friends. They have a spouse that can help them. They have children, whatever. That's not everybody's story. And sometimes people learn from making mistakes. But in this situation, it wasn't a mistake being me. I worked my shit. You need to pay me for the work that I did. It's funny how that argument is just lost. So, so like I said, colonizers, you can kiss my black ass. Goodbye.